Hey guys, how are you? Hope you're all doing very well. Today I've got a review for you all. This is an Australian drama slash horror, more so a drama, but it does have horror element in it. Released in 2006, directed by Anna Kukinos, and this movie is called The Book of Revelation. And the story is as follows. Daniel and his girlfriend Bridget are principal dancers in choreographer Isabel's renowned company. During a rehearsal break, Daniel goes out and doesn't return for 12 days. Mysteriously abducted and abused by three women, thrown back into the world a broken man. The weeks that follow and the events perpetrated on him by his abductors begin to be revealed. Desperate to discover their identity, Daniel embarks on a dark journey of descent and his search, into, his search turns into a sexual odyssey, fueled by the memory of his bizarre imprisonment. The end brings a violent confrontation that produces a course of action that is both devastating and re revelatory. So, what we have here, there is a dance school, a very prestigious dance school, that is owned by Isabel, who is the chief uh, choreographer. Now, Isabel's top dancers, they're a couple. There's Daniel and Bridget, and they're the main piece of this performance that's coming up. So, on the day of the performance, in the morning, they're going through a rehearsal, and Bridget asks Daniel if he can go to the shop and get her some cigarettes. So, he agrees to do this, but he never returns. The police file a missing person report, but no one has any idea of where he's gone. It's just like he has disappeared off the face of the earth. However, he returns 12 days later, and he's a completely different person. He is just so out of it. So although the people around him don't know what happened because he won't talk about it, uh, they know that he is in great trouble because he's lost his interest in dance and he's lost his interest in his loved ones. So the the people close to him, they're trying desperately to um, see what happened. He won't have anything of it. And then this what is what forces him to go on a journey. Now, he wants to know uh, why he was abducted and who these people were. So basically, he was abducted by three mysterious women in cloaks and they tortured him, they sexually abused him for 12 days. So he has no idea why he was chosen, but he has an obsession that he wants to find out who these women are. Now he has some idea of who the women are because he sees their body, and he can see some marks on their body. So this gives him a clue. So he decides that he's going to sleep with as many women as he can in order to find out who these people were, because he's got a suspicion that they're close by. So it turns into a sexual odyssey for Daniel, and he's starting to lose his mind, and he really is desperate to seek out the truth as to why he was chosen, because it has ruined his life. So whether or not he's successful in revealing their hidden identities, that is something that you're going to have to find out for yourself, because that is, as far as I'm going, is a synopsis. Now, my thoughts on this movie. One of the most disappointing films to come out of Australia in a very long time. Now, my expectation levels were so high because some very well-respected critics had given this a very good write-up, and it was a very provocative idea. So that's what something that is uh, really taking Australia by storm lately. Australia have grown balls, and they're showing provocative cinema instead of playing it safe. Wolf Creek really started that trend, and from that point on, it really it changed the way Australians went about making their films. So I had high expectations that this one was going to be equally as provocative and it was going to shock people because the overall idea was shocking. It centres around rape. And if this was done properly, this would have been a very, very unique sort of film because what I liked about it is the fact that it changes the gender. It's females inflicting pain on males. And it really gave an impression that this was a, a movie made in genuine hatred for men because uh, it just seems a topic that every man in this film, well, most of them were depicted as sleazy, and these women had a very mysterious power. So uh, it, nothing supernatural, but it, they just they had a lot of control, and that's something you don't see from movies a lot. So I applaud that. I actually thought that was a risk. And for that little element in the film, I thought it was well done. However, for a disturbing film, it just wasn't that disturbing. Now, the torture scenes were more pleasurable than painful, and I can say that most single men out there would kill to be in Daniel's position. So when the bad things started happening, it just didn't really wasn't realistic and I just couldn't understand how Daniel would find this painful. It would actually be, you know, as I said, a single man's dream. Uh, there's one scene that I could say was fairly painful, but apart from that, it was just wasn't that disturbing as it's made out to be. Now, uh, the violence is pretty non-existent. Uh, there's very graphic sexual acts, so um, just be very careful of that. But as I said, the biggest problem is that it was erotic. 
it wasn't disturbing. It wasn't something that made you cringe. It was something that, you know, would arouse someone. It was just like a softcore porn film. And that's why I think Anna Kikinos really failed to deliver something provocative. Now, the first 30 minutes was really good. Um, it had a very dreaded atmosphere, and I actually thought we were going into a very dark journey. But then halfway through, Anna Kikinos completely stops with the dark journey and goes into a boring soap opera. It goes for 112 minutes and it felt like it went for 212 minutes. It was a very long and painfully drawn out film. And the pacing is, is like two, two different stories in one. And by the halfway stage, you're kind of wondering, is Cray, or sorry, is Daniel the same one that was put through this trauma? Um, he started off traumatized, but then it's like he's a completely different person. So, it really goes into a boring soap opera, and it's everything that is wrong with Australian cinema. Uh, I thought it played it safe when it should have been provocative. It puts itself up on the platform to be provocative and to be a risk. But in the end, I just don't feel that the director played a risk. And in, in the end, it was just an absolutely boring bucket of slop. The acting, Tom, um, Tom Long, this is his impression for a happy face, and this is his impression for a sad face. Completely the same. This guy has no range in expression, and it kind of just felt like he was a fence paling. And I, that's very, very harsh, but Tom Long, I don't like that guy at all as far as acting is concerned. I don't feel that he played a very realistic character. He was certainly not likable. There was no character development at all, so I really didn't care what happened to him. But he just felt very forced, and it felt like it was very much overacted. Therefore, I think that the casting of Tom Long in a very serious role was maybe the wrong choice. Deborah Mailman is a very good Aboriginal actor. I actually thought she did okay in this film, but I have no idea why she was introduced into it. It just felt like another character that was bringing it down rather than making a progressive um, step forward. Colin Friels plays a detective who was the best part of the film. He's great in everything he does. But once again, it's a very uh, you know forgettable sort of character that he's playing. Then you've got Greta Scarchi who plays the choreographer. She's a good actress, but once again, a very um, shallow sort of character. And then you've got the ending, which is one of the most anticlimactic endings you'll ever see. It's supposed to be um, devastating, but it's not. It's just absolute dribble. So all in all, uh, you know, the soundtrack, nothing to be um, to take note of. Uh, if you're a fan of dancing, there's just not enough dancing in here that will even make you interested. And so all in all, it was supposed to be a drama slash disturbing film but it's a drama slash sit, uh, shit sandwich film. So I'm really sorry for anyone who likes this, but I'm going to give this one out of five. I'm going to give it one because the first 30 minutes were good, but then it just completely turns into a bucket of slop. So one of the most uh, disappointing Australian films to come out in a very long time. I'm definitely not recommending it. If you're into extreme stuff, don't let the front cover fool you because this is a very, very uh, crap film. So one out of five, definitely not coming recommended. All right, guys, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Bye.